Okay, welcome to the Crow Discovery Project. Uh, I've got a cool solar clip. Uh, I tried to film in some new ways, which was partially a fail and partially a learning experience. I also have a kind of strange object uh, using the H-alpha solar filter. And lastly, there's going to be an update on Jupiter because I actually videoed Jupiter turning blue again, uh, for those of you that remember my clip back in, I think it was 2013. Anyhow, uh, please check me out on theexaminer.com. The link is in the description of this video. Subscribe to author and uh, follow me. And so here we go. Okay, so I'm putting the, uh, the weight system on the scope because I'm going to hook up the solar rig. So the weight system just goes under there. I've got a rail. I don't know, I'm trying to see. Yeah, you can see it. There's a rail on the bottom. And this just slides in and locks off and you balance it once you get the camera and everything on there and then there's a rail on the top actually there um, and that'll hold the scope and everything so I've got a new way that I'm gonna try to film the Sun today with eyepiece projection and I'll show you all how I'm doing that okay so I'm just mounting the scope up and I try to keep the center of it like here's the fork arms and I try to keep the center of it you know about there and then lock it down on the other rail that I installed and I'll show you the the new system I'm gonna try to set up today I don't know if I'll be able to focus but I'll give it a go if I can focus it'll let me really zoom in on the Sun okay so here is the new system I'm going to use um, to try to film the sun and hopefully I can focus. So this is a standard adapter ring. Uh, depending on the kind of camera you have, this is how you need one of these to attach to your telescope. I have one for my Nikon, one for my Canon, and it, it just screws right actually like this. Um, I pull off the lens cap, it screws in there, and that locks the camera up. So what I have here is this eyepiece projection system so I stripped an eyepiece down took the you know the rubber off of it and it slides right in here and then I just lock it down and once it's locked down then I take this and just screw it on Okay, so I'll tighten everything up, but what's going to happen is now there's an eyepiece projecting. So the light comes in this side, projects out through the eyepiece, and then when it's attached to the camera, uh, I get I gain focus on the camera sensor. But what it, what it allows is the magnification of this eyepiece to, you know, get you in closer to whatever you're looking at. And in that, hopefully it's going to be the sun. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to focus using this method, but I think I can. So this is a 26 millimeter eyepiece. It'll get us significantly closer and we'll see what happens. Okay, so there's the Nikon all loaded up with the uh, eyepiece projection system. And so the way it will mount is this right here goes into the diagonal, um, which is that little bent piece with a prism in it that you know when you're using a telescope and you're using an eyepiece you use that normally when I film I don't use a diagonal because it flips things so you see them in reverse and uh, upside down uh, depending on what you're using but uh, you, you don't have a choice you have to have a diagonal to use this system so there it is okay so here's the result of the Barlow test and it was kind of a fail although I learned quite a bit doing it um, I'm gonna need to have the projection if I do it this way further away from the sensor um, and as you can see at the front of this little clip um, the surface detail was okay but beyond that you just can't gain good focus so I need more distance so I switched over to a Barlow uh, two times Barlow with a lens and I'm back to filming uh, in the usual way a lot of surface detail and there is a pretty good prominence there on the left um, that you'll see here in a second there um, I shift over to the focus that allows me to see the prominence better and, and reposition the blocking the H alpha blocking filter and as we go along here I'll throw through some filters so that we can really check out what's going on here and at one point um, I pull the bar Barlow apart and uh, and pull the lens out and I'll show you the result of that so it's still got the distance of the Barlow um, but no lens inside the Barlow doubling. 
So here we are running through filters so you can kind of see the surface detail better. And I was finding that when you go into reds and blues, you can really bring it up with contrast brightness and a channel color channel change into those spectrums. And so here is the prominence, and actually that lower prominence is coming off the sun quite a bit. Um, I didn't measure it, but I'm guessing that that's quite a bit er bigger than they tell us the Earth is. Um, normally when you go to Soho, there's a little representation of what they tell us the Earth looks like in comparison to the sun. And then here in the green uh, color channel, you can begin to see the the surface detail really well and we'll just run through some of the filters here and kind of see some of the rills up there and again the uh, the sunspots were very minor only a couple of them they're very small that white dot there into the disk of the sun a bit and then here these orange views uh, really give you a good view of surface detail now I'm gonna have to work out how to focus the uh, the prominence is a little better, but I think this is my favorite view. Uh, this shade of blue really seems to let you see the surface detail the best. And that ring around the sun has a name. It's, I don't know, either Einstein or Newton's ring. I forget which. Um, but you can look it up if you care to understand what that's all about. So what I'm going to do here is load a clip uh, that shows birds going by the H alpha filter. And uh, you'll understand why I'm doing this in a minute. So they're going to go across the bottom of the disk very quickly here, and then I'll slow it down. Here they come across the bottom, and there they go. So I'll slow it down just a hair so that you can see what you're seeing is they're just dimming the light. And, you know, they're within probably two, three hundred feet of me. I'm guessing. So here's the weird object. Now you got to realize I have probably less than 50 hours experience filming the sun. Um, I do not have the same experience I do at night with the moon, so I'm not sure what to think about this object. But look at the bottom of the sun here and you will see an object come off. Now I'm running a Barlow with no lens here when this happened. Here it comes off the bottom. Now what strikes me about this, and again, I need more experience at doing this before I feel confident in making a call, but what's unusual, this is slowed way down, is just how bright it is when that H alpha filter is blocking. I mean, we're staring at the sun with the scope. It's blocking nearly all of the light except for certain spectrum. And yet we have this object that appears to be glowing in that same kind of red color. Here's the last view of the object. Okay, so that brings me to the update I'm about to do. Last night I filmed Jupiter and back, I think it was 2013, I'm not sure, uh, I took 200 stills to make this image, stack them. But in the course of the evening, uh, for those of you that remember, I got images of Jupiter turning blue. Now this was shot with my Canon and my other old telescope. What I shot with last night was a completely different camera and a completely different telescope and I ran video. And what I have is actual live video of Jupiter changing color, um, going very deep blue and then back to this kind of pale yellow uh, that we expect Jupiter to look like when we look at it. Um, these are the images from the 2013 footage, not out of my current video. These were all stills and uh, you know you can see my ISO t and the time of night and all that. It was happening very quickly. Out of 200 and some images I got a handful, maybe a few more than that, that were blue like this and at the time I thought it was unusual. So um, my next video is going to be very interesting because I actually have high def live video of Jupiter changing color. So I'm not sure what we're looking at here, but things seem funny. I'll leave it at that for now. So there it is. Uh, cheers.